Hello, fabulous Friends fans and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. Here we go again with Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, your facilitator of Synchronicity, Nadia Shaw. Thank you so much for being here. And I am here with the amazing Yuridia Robles. Hey. She is my friend. We love <laughs> each other. We do. We've Thank been you for knowing me. each other. Of course, of course, anytime. <laughs> But we've known each other for years, actually, and uh, Yuridia really is very special. She is the only astrologer who works for the government of Mexico. She works for the Department of the Lottery, the National Lottery here in Mexico as well. And we are going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the history of the lottery in Mexico and the astrological significance. We are going to talk about Fortuna and the mythology of Fortuna. We are going to talk about the part of fortune, something that I'm asked so much about and we are going to look at how to create fortune for you in your life right where you are and this is your moment of synchronicity right here with my friend Yuridia Robles thank you so much I'm, for being here thank you for inviting me I'm, it's an honor you know and I've been looking forward to see you and to work with you thank well, you so much thank you okay so <laughs> let's jump in si. tell me about the history of the lottery in Mexico well the history of the lottery is very special you know because it's uh, next year is going to be 250 years that there is a national lottery in Mexico. It came out in a very special time in, in our country. But the main gift it brought to our nation, to our territory, to our country, is that everybody could buy a ticket. Mm. Before that, you have to have literally a degree or a pedigree or a skin color to be, a, to be able to have money. But when the lottery came in, everybody could buy a ticket for one peso. They, it, they, sold, it, they sold it by series, a 20 piece um, a series, 20 pesos, but then they divided it and the poor people would play amongst themselves, themselves to buy a one a cachito, mm -hmm. one special piece for one peso. And from then on, it grabbed our hearts and it survived our independence, it survived um, our succession, the war with the states, it survived all the 19th hundred, um, the century, it survived our revolution and also the 20th century. So it's a very special place to work that. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to be part of it. That's yeah, amazing. See, see. Yeah. Um, and also it's a um, special center because it has a, a sort of palace, which is in Art Nouveau style. Uh, it's classical Art Nouveau. Mm -hmm. When you consult that in Wikipedia, it comes out. Mm -hmm. It's very... Um, uh, telling for that uh, period and also it's like the for the palace of goddess fortuna wow <laughs> and so you're just tapping into that energy yeah. mm -hmm. and did they create it specifically Absol as the si. home of the goddess fortuna si, for the absolutely lottery? because for almost 200 years the national lottery didn't have its own space so it was running around the town in the main center in different universities and gardens and places but by 1930s, they had they acknowledged the national lottery since it was gaining a lot of um, profit for the state as well. Uh, they, it should have a special palace. So they asked a, uh, the president, which is a very um, famous president, is um, Lázaro Cárdenas, mm -hmm. the per, the per, to give the per permission to build a skyscraper in Reforma, which was for a few months the first one to be, uh, to be built. Mm. And uh, it used a special kind of um, foundation because the, the floor is muddy. Mm. You remember all of you that Mexico City is in a lake, mm -hmm. so the floor, the, the soil is very muddy. So he had to be sure that this big building of 17 floors would not fall down. Mm. So when he, when he knew that the special engineer designed this system of building, then he approved it and it was inaugurated in 1946. Mm. And it's still there, it's a the palace of the National Lottery. It has a big uh, auditorium. You, I will invite you next time. Yeah. You. I get to <laughs> go. Yes, yes, I'll yeah. put pictures on Instagram <laughs> when I yeah, go. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> and um, it has a 500 seat auditorium and we have drafts Monday, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. And on Sunday, it's my special day because it's the draft astrology, the zodiac draft. Mm -hmm. And that's why, why I'm there, especially working for that draft. That's mm -hmm. incredible. See? And so how does it feel to you to connect with this uh, goddess energy of Fortuna every day, really? Like, yeah. are you aware of the the evocation of the sacred symbols that are around you? It's, I am absolutely aware because uh, for it, it, it's an exact mirror of what we are used to see in, as astrologers. Mm -hmm. We understand the universe as a sphere. And in these spheres, everything behaves more or less properly, except that except the planets. They go their own way at certain times and they play tricks on us. Mm -hmm. So those, as if we could understand them still as, as gods and goddesses, they are playing its own game and we are part of that game without even knowing. So exactly like that, the draft in the lottery has a big sphere with sometimes 80,000 small wooden balls, mm -hmm. or sometimes a hundred thousand and sometimes wow. ten thousand balls. All of them have a number inscribed on it. The, the children, because since the very beginning, uh, orphans, boy, orphan boys, will shout the prizes. Mm -hmm. The number, the number, the winner, and the prize. So they are known as Niños Gritones, mm -hmm. the shouting boys since that time. And it's only until 2001 that girls came in as a part of the group, as part of the group. Mm. So they are very uh, loved in uh, on our tradition. And 12 of them, 12 of them come, they keep changing, but in the draft only 6 are uh, operating the machines and reading the prices and the numbers. Only them touch the mechanism, no adult. Although there are almost 30 people that certified that certifies that the draft is absolutely clean, transparent. None ever in its history, in almost 200 years, have been a problem with the draft. Mm -hmm. It's been absolutely transparent. No problem with the winner and all that. So um, the children come down as uh, ambassadors of the goddess Fortuna. Wow. Exactly. And That's I say incredible. to them, I invite them to come down. And think of how old that tradition actually is, See? right? It isn't just See? something that's isolated here to the last couple hundred years in Mexico. No, no. no. That goes way See, back I'm to ancient it. times. See? Yeah. And from ancient times, they understood this thing about goddess Fortuna being a, circ a sphere. And so when we, I am in the draft, I can see her. I'm an astrologer, so I can of course I can, we see I can, that. I can, I can yeah, help we myself do. that. Yeah, we. I can see her running around these small thousands of stars, like we see in the sky, and only few of them come out and play from the small sphere. So we have this interplay of planets and stars, actually between numbers and prices. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the children shout the number and it's amazing how, for example, on Sundays, when the moon is in certain sign, the sign manifests itself. Mm -hmm. It does manifest. Not always with the first prize, but, uh, but it does appear. Every sign has 30 prizes, mm -hmm. for sure, no, 60. Yes, because 60 astrology prizes. is so mm -hmm. interwoven into See. how the lottery is understood See. and played See. here. See. Like, I know when I walk by the, the booths that sell the lottery See. tickets, it will say like Aries, See. Taurus, See. like it's, Absolutely. it's very integrated into yeah, the lottery it's, it's, a, it's an astrological draft. Mm. So you, can, you have two, choice, two opportunities to win. One with a sign and one with a number. Mm. So if your si you bought a, a sign that won, you can exchange not the number, but you can exchange that for another for another draft mm. and keep on playing. Mm. Ah, so, okay. See, see. So you have like one in twelve chance see, exactly. to just even uh, get another chance. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. To get a free ticket as a, as, a, as a sign. Yes. Mm. And it's amazing. Sometimes numbers are very magical. I used to. I always tell people that if they, are, they have a ticket, then if they read a number, as in numerology, it has a meaning and a, a secret code or secret message for them that 
they have to understand that. If it's a one, if you sum up all the quantities of the number, all the numbers, if you, it's a one, it's a certain thing, a two, a three, etc. up until nine, right? So um, it has a meaning. So when the draft starts, every ritual since very antiquity had to be um, enclosed in time and space. Mm -hmm. So we, I already explained, we have um, a um, palace. And every time, every, the draft has to start precisely at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And it lasts only an hour. And by that, by that time, you, I can hear, or we all can hear, and see now from the internet, how go the goddess is um, given away it's justice. Mm. But then we have to understand that it's the justice of the gods, not our justice. Mm. And we can uh, later, I'll explain that with well, Goddess Fortuna. Let's talk about See. Goddess Fortuna. Okay. Let's talk. What are some myths that we need to understand as part of understanding not only the energy of Fortuna, mm -hmm. but especially as it relates to the part of fortune that's named after so, her. So see. give me, tell me some myths. I'm really excited to learn about <laughs> her. So tell me about well, her. I explain a lot of myths to people see, when the draft is going on. But the most important one is how Fortuna came to be. Mm -hmm. She is the descendant of the great big goddess Astrea. And Astrea is the universe that encloses us, that it was understood as a big sphere, and we are inserted on that. Astrea was giving, uh, when we were with the big goddess, uh, as a culture, she was giving away uh, justice, mm -hmm. and we understood that. But as we started to grow in quantity, and in groups, we started arguing about each other, and she was no longer understood as one law. She was understood as different laws. And then she came up uh, angry, the myth says, she was angry with humans because humans didn't agree with each other. So she said, so you, wanted, you want fortune by yourselves. So she threw to us the scales of the sign of Libra and she left and went to heaven. Mm. So that's why you have the big constellation of, Bir of Virgo on top of the, of the Milky Way and Underneath that is the, or on her feet, are the scales of Libra. Mm -hmm. When exactly when the Romans started developing the justice and the legal law. Mm. So um, since that time we have forgotten that the goddess really is giving away Fortuna. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I say that she is giving justice to people, it's, a, it's her justice. Sometimes it goes to a very small place, the first prize. Sometimes it stays in the city. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't get, uh, nobody buys the ticket. Mm -hmm. So um, I was saying that in the, especially in the zodiac draft, the astrological draft, the, the sign that is, um, for example, the moon is in a, in a special sign, of course it comes out with the biggest prizes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there are some signs that only come out with one price, one, mm. one big price. Mm. So, and it's um, reflected in the chart in of that fancy. particular uh, exactly, draft. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, Fortuna, there's a myth, uh, a story I tell everybody that comes to the draft, that she's the daughter then of a... I just want to say, we are in Mexico City, so if you're hearing some si, sirens si, or something, si. we are going to keep going. Si. We don't stop. There's a party going on outside, but I insisted on leaving the windows open because I thought it would add to the energy here. So let's get back to what you were saying. Just <laughs> si. wanted to explain that. But yes. Good, good. Yeah, perfect. So <laughs> Fortuna is the daughters of, the, of um, Tennis the goddess of justice and Zeus, mm -hmm. no more than who else, the but big Zeus goddess. Zeus is the Zeus. father of everybody, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got around, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but Fortuna was a very special little girl and her father wanted to keep her with him all the time. Mm. So he asked Mercury to teach her to, he devised a plan and the plan consisted on asking Mercury to please uh, teach the girl to run as speedily as he, as the god himself of, of Mercury. So the girl did. And then she asked, he asked the uh, Ceres or Demeter 
the goddess of nature, to teach the little girl every species of grease that would give fruit mm. and, and uh, nurture. And it was very important because on, in the, just at dawn, these fruits would uh, sweat, literally, a special little um, water that's dew, the dew, mm -hmm. they call um, ambrosia, mm -hmm. ambrose? Yeah, ambrosia. Ambrosia, ambrosia. Yeah. yeah. And it was very important to pick that up before it, it would dry it up, because that ambrosia would give gives the, the goddesses and gods eternal youth beauty wow. and life mm. so she had to speed all over Greece picking up the ambrosia to bring it to his to her to her father and uh, to give all the all the goddess so the Greeks uh, were looking forward uh, uh, looking uh, looking forward now looking for Fortuna mm. all over the place to because they thought that if they could trap her, the goddess and Zeus, everybody would be so nervous that they would concede every, any uh, wish you asked for. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But if they thought they, they could, if they trapped, trapped her, her uh -huh. they would be able to have whatever they asked. See, okay. Exactly. Because she was so valuable to Zeus. See, exactly. Oh, wow. Except that she also learned from Aries, uh, not Aries the sign, but Ares, the Mars, yeah. the god. To have a strategy mm. and she also learned from the moon selene to hide herself mm. and to put her hair in a certain way that nobody could see her mm. so the greeks greeks uh, gave give us three advices if you want to trap the goddess fortuna you have to be alert because you cannot run after her you will never catch her but if you are alert and she comes in and confronts you you have to accept her. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, take the chance, the opportunity to be there, to be ready. You also uh, have to be um, uh, open to understand what was the gift that she's bringing, because she's picking a lot of fruits from different, uh, or ambrosia for a lot. So she will, may bring to you a for, um, special kind of fortuna, and you never know what is it. That's brilliant. It could be, it could be, of course, wealth. It could be friendship. It could be love. Mm -hmm. It would be. It could be health. It could be knowledge. Mm -hmm. It could be a good heart. It, uh, uh, any kind of of things. So if you are alert and willing, you could ask for that fortuna to mm -hmm. be. And also, you cannot be. Uh, despite uh, despiteful mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because then because y if you reject a gift of the goddess or the goddesses then it would be mm, bad luck mm. oh, and mm. not fortuna you are re rejecting her and right. I think that we don't always appreciate no. the, the luck that we do have because See? I really do believe that mm -hmm. every single one of us has our own unique lottery Absolutely, ticket. Absolutely, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just basically what it comes down to, like the part of fortune. Mm -hmm. We all have that access to touch on, to cultivate a relationship with the goddess Fortuna, mm -hmm. which is represented in the part of fortune. Mm -hmm. And it will be different and unique for everybody. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so we will get to that. So um, that way, the, the Greeks understood Fortuna and sent us or left that story to us, that knowledge, mm -hmm. to appreciate what I know, uh, the, for the fortune we receive. I know, working in the lottery, I know a lot of people, a few people, um, that have win the, won the lottery. And there is a man in, uh, down in the coast of Gulf of Mexico that he says, that he comes to the store, the shop, where th all the tickets are being sold, and then he knows the winner exactly because the number jumps at him. At him. Mm. Uh, it's so much so that when he approaches the shop, the girls inside or the owner <laughs> hides the number because he will always buy the main price. But then he says, I wish I could have a different fortuna. I wish I could have love or health and I would give my fortune, my kind of fortune to anybody. So that lesson to, uh, taught me 
to appreciate. And every time somebody comes, tell me your f my fortune. I always say, you always you have fortune. I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. hmm? I am See? always asked about that. See? I think that's <laughs> something that we as astrologers are asked about so often. See? Um, about how to create fortune, how to create luck. Mm -hmm. um, and students of astrology very often ask about the part of fortune. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. How mm -hmm. is it that the myth and these beautiful uh, myths that you told us, which I just mm -hmm. felt like I had these like like moments uh, as I was listening to you tell mm -hmm. these stories mm -hmm. about how it is that we're not always grateful for the no. blessings we do have, mm -hmm. um, how it is that we uh, try to actually cultivate or capture mm -hmm. the luck mm -hmm. and how we think we're gonna get it, but how we don't actually find that balance sometimes mm -hmm. and that is so important as part of Fortuna to mm -hmm. appreciate the, the blessings that we do have. Yeah. And so how does the goddess relate to and her stories relate to the part of fortune? What can you tell us about the part of fortune? The part of fortune is a um, technique developed in ancient times in Greek, a Hellenistic Greek that came through the Arabs and we know them as par Arabic parts and, and now they, we have been studying them, you know. Um, but I came about the symbolism of it with um, the understanding. I knew the formula. The formula, as you know, is the distance between the sun and the moon applied to the ascendant. Mm. Uh, you have to count on degrees, and if you are there's a special uh, um, if you were born at night, the part of, formula, of fortune should be up more or less and the, and the, if you were born at day the, the part of fortune is in in the underneath okay. in the one to six so let me explain this mm -hmm. i just want to yes. be very clear see we have a lot of online calculators a lot see, of uh, chart generators you can easily find out where your part of fortune is based mm -hmm. on these but if you wanted to like a lot of us astro nerds if you wanted to figure <laughs> out where it was what you do is you look at the moon the exact placement of the moon. Mm -hmm. The moon will be in a sign, but it is also in a degree of that sign. And every sign is divided into 30 degrees. So we have 30 degrees, we have 12 signs, that's 360. Absolutely. 360 yeah. days a year, mm -hmm. the sun goes all the way around the zodiac. Uh, 360 is a perfect circle as mm -hmm. well. And so you look at the degree, the number of your moon, and you look at the sign and the degree, the mm -hmm. number of your sun, and the distance, the difference between those two based mm -hmm. on the degrees is what you then apply to the ascendant. And so let's give some examples. See. So uh -huh. if you have, let's say, to keep it really simple, let's say you have a, a moon at 15 degrees of Aries. Yes. Then you have a sun at 15 degrees of Gemini. Mm -hmm. That is 60, 60 degrees. degrees. Right, mm -hmm. so do you understand how that happened? We're looking at 30 degrees a sign. We've got half of one, half of another, and a whole sign in between, that's 60. See. Then you go to the ascendant, and you are going to count from the ascendant 60 degrees, and it could go mm -hmm. either way. Mm -hmm. Now this is a little bit debated among see, astrologers, uh -huh. uh, whether you're gonna go up or whether you're gonna go down. But the thing is that you know, and you are an expert also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the part of spirit mm -hmm. that works with the part of fortune. fortune yeah. So what can you tell us about the relationship between these two uh, and how it is that you would calculate these two? Yeah, I will, I will. Except that I want to, to um, explain and to make clear why it came out uh, as it as is, as is this. That's great, yes, please do. See, That's a great let idea. me um, remind you that the um, astrological knowledge came from the Middle East, from Sumeria and from um, Mesopotamia mm -hmm. and the Chaldean culture. And they were very knowledgeable about the cycles of the sun, of course, and the moon. But it was the Greek, the Egyptians, that understood very clearly that they have to see the east, what, what, uh, what was happening in the east just before the sun, or what was happening all night at the east, to understand the hour, because what happened at the east at that time would manifest in the following day. 
So the knowledge that the ascendant or what happens in the East uh, as the um, procedure to manifest in life, to be real, to be touchable, it comes from the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So much so that the Sphinx is looking East the big thing so um the sphinx of like giza yeah of mm -hmm. giza mm -hmm. and when you go to these ancient See. sites they are so aligned with See. the stars, with stars and, and, and astrological See. phenomena we talk about it in mm -hmm. as in that how it is in mexico's in mexico's culture oh, yes. and very powerful history the pyramids yeah. in, in here, mexico yeah. yeah but it also like that in in egypt mm -hmm. and it was important for them because he they knew the sky as a clock, precise clock. They were looking, of course, as you remember, the rise of Hlaical rising of Sirius, because then the Nile would flood and they would have a moist to cultivate and have food. Mm -hmm. And the whole civilization of Egypt depended on that, depended on, depended on that. So uh, they taught the ancients that the east point or the ascent, I know there's a difference, but to the east direction, the ascendant would mark the hour, would signal what was going to happen. So in the tarot card, in the Marseille tarot, which is the oldest one, you have the card that is the tarot card, you will show it to them later. I'll you put that up right now. Yeah. 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 You have three figures in that, in, the, in that chart. You have a wheel, a round wheel, which is how we mark that in the chart which is a, a circle with a cross. Mm -hmm. You have that in the, in the, in the tarot cards. And in, on top of that, you have a sphinx, a mm -hmm. little weird sphinx, and two animals. The two animals are not very well drawn, but they do represent the rabbit for the moon and the lion for the sun. Mm -hmm. So that, that tarot card shows the relationship and the understanding of the of between the luminaries applied to the hour, applied to the horoscope mm -hmm. or the ascendant. Mm -hmm. So that's why I came to, to study in a different way or in a special way, the part of fortune and the part of spirit. With this image of the tarot, I understood then that we had to, under, uh, we had to come to the part, to these two parts at least, from a different perspective. We are used to finding the sign and then uh, give a reading according to the sign and then go to the ruler of the sign. But the part of fortune does not come about that way. It's talking about the moon. So if we understand that the moon is our incarnation, how we feel about in this body, and with this body we materialize stuff. So the part of fortune is coming from the moon to the sun. That means that we are, it's Fortuna because we go with our spirit, with our, our incarnation to manifest our spirit, our son, and to give it a life through the ascendant. So, for example, a person that has a moon in Sagittarius would be open and would feel comfortable if it's traveling, if it's really getting to know different cultures, right? She feels at home like that. And then she has the sun in Aquarius. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's talking about me. Okay. So the sun in Aquarius <laughs> would give a spirit also concerned with the humanity at large and would like to give something to humans in a, in the very big way, in a very intelligent way. But then the ascendant is at cancer, is in cancer, mm. yeah. So she always presents, and you know her very well, very caring, very loving to all of us. She's always praising and give us um, enthusiasm and um, understanding to be the best we can be. She always gives this reading, right? You can write to her and tell her <laughs> that because it's right. These good readings and loving so we can feel good of, of ourselves and be better, just as a mother would give to their kids. So then the part of fortune goes to Gemini, right? Me, yeah. yeah. And so this Gemini, she feels at ease and most happy with for her fortune when she finds a lot of friends she can share all this knowledge to her.
see? So that's a reading different that if I go to directly to the part of fortune being a Gemini, and then I find Mercury, and then from Mercury I go to Saturn in her, which is a different thing. And the part of fortune is reading the part of the body being incarnated, the spirit that is the sun, and how we manifest it through the ascendant. Mm -hmm. And we have to go to the sign of the fort part of fortune. Mm -hmm. And likewise, if you go to the other side, we go to the part of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it goes from the sun to the moon. So your sun being as open and uh, capable of understanding big ideas and, and a lot of knowledge goes to try, you try literally to go to every part of the world to teach these new ideas, no matter if it's China, India, Pakistan, or Europe, or Mexico. I will, do, <laughs> I will go to the ends of the earth to teach astrology. Yeah. It's very true. And then that part of fortune goes all the other way, just to the cups, cusp of your second house. Mm. So that will give you also abundance to you and a lot of value mm -hmm. to your work. Mm -hmm. So if we can go to a reading like that, it's a, it, it adds to the reading instead of, oh, just another point. It will give you money if you talk to your friends. Mm -hmm. That's no, not the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I just want to clarify, I hope that you can see how she made that connection. You divide, you go up, see. you take the degrees we talked about earlier, like let's say 60 degrees, you go up on the, uh, like above the ascendant, uh -huh. uh, towards the midheaven See? and then you also are going to go uh below the ascendant towards the i see i see uh -huh. towards the fourth house cusp so you're basically creating these two mirrors uh -huh. and they work together part of fortune and part of spirit mm -hmm. and so as yuridia shared yes i have my part of fortune in <laughs> the sorry. 11th house in Ge gemini uh -huh. it's fine no thank you i'm a little mm -hmm. exposed but that's okay <laughs> um but then i also have my part of spirit in the si. second house in leo si. and i often talk about and i'll tell you i have a, a spiritual mentor He's passed away mm -hmm. years ago, but he made such a huge impact on my life that I still talk about him from time to time. Yeah, uh, him. yeah Tom John I talk about, mm -hmm. and he uh, passed away from uh, like AIDS-related uh, things, which is you know why I also talk about that issue mm -hmm. from time to time. But that's a side note. But Tom John was huge in helping me to understand mm -hmm. like money mm -hmm. from a more spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. and that is part of what I teach to understand it as um just one symbol mm -hmm. but to consider what prosperity really is for you and prosperity mm -hmm. is being at peace with yourself mm -hmm. living from your heart which is exactly. very leo exactly and so i think in this way and this appreciation mm -hmm. and the the blessing that tom john was for me mm -hmm is how I've been able to really understand how prosperous life mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And it is part of what I teach. Exactly. And so it, it fits in so perfectly with what you shared. Yeah. And so we all have that connection. We all have our own unique way of how mm -hmm. it is that we are going to tap into the part of fortune and the part of spirit and make it work together. Yeah, just, uh, just a note, it's not, we have to read carefully the rule. So, because if you have a night chart birth or a day chart birth, that the, the, you have to go, you go either way. Yeah, so okay. you flip it. Si. Uh -huh. So, this is a little controversial si. for si. some, but uh -huh. you are the one of the preeminent experts in this matter. And so, essentially, when you look at your chart, you have uh, the surface of the earth mm -hmm. represented as yeah, the, the line. Uh -huh. Yes, from the ascendant to the descendant. Mm -hmm. That is the surface of the earth. And if you were born with the sun below that line, from your first to your sixth house, you have what's called a night chart. A night chart. And if you were born with the sun anywhere from the seventh to the twelfth house, you have a day chart. And so that's where you have to consider. So what did you say? If you were born a uh, night chart, the the di sometimes the distance is measured between, let's say, the moon graphically is the moon to the sun but sometimes you have to this distance you apply it to the ascendant if it's the night chart you go up okay if it's you uh, if you if it's a daytime you go down okay so the the part of fortune goes above See, uh -huh. the horizon if you were born at night night okay uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so and then it flips so if you were born mm -hmm. at night you're counting from 
uh, above the horizon. You're counting like basically the degrees starting at the beginning, at the end of the 12th house, like that. Si. Now the thing though to remember is that these two work together, si. the part of spirit and the part of fortune. So don't get too caught up in it if it sounds confusing. Mm -hmm. No, just, please. Yeah, uh -huh. just know that the degrees are there and you're counting on either side and where the part of fortune and the part of spirit end up you are connecting them in some important way. Exactly. Um, and also the programs give you the part of spirit. I mean, the part of fortune. And you know the other side as a, in, um, Antisha. Mm -hmm. You have the other part. And so you can do the reading that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they ask, we can write the, 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 in the notes. Yeah, I can send you the rule and you can add it to <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, the rules are there. We'll see, try to put it see. in the description. In the description Remind me to do that. Yeah. Send that okay. to me because okay. we are mm -hmm. having such a riveting conversation <laughs> about so much here. Okay. okay. So um, the part of fortune tells, I tell the story of that as well because if I have time, I write, I tell the story about Fortuna. But sometimes I tell them that the ancient people understood that you have to be at peace with your body, whatever, it, however it is, and that you would have to listen to your spirit as the sun, no? but also you have to build your character from the ascendant point. And the, these three characteristics would give you three characteristics will give you the whole fortuna. So if you understand that, you understand yourself, and with that you have as you said, a, a great gift that nobody can give you except yourself, mm. right? So um, that story helps, helps me a lot to um, invite people to play because the play, as, at least in Mexico, it has been always, it has been a part of the state that helps a lot of people. Since the very beginning, four or five, no, and it's like seven or eight years after it started as a government um, organization, it decided to give a lot of money to the orphans at that time in 1778. It was a lot of money, so the orphans were much better. But with that money, they, they uh, have always built infrastructure for the country as roads and pavement and hospitals and um, orphanatories and schools, um, as, as well as helping um, turning around people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate a lot that part of the, that when people play in Mexico at least, they enter in a game that will help the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we are now fighting with that in the sense that asking, uh, giving, acquiring that um, sense of um, multiplicity of community that we can help each other with that. And as I was telling you before, there doesn't ever have been a problem with the drafts. Mm -hmm. Never. It is as transparent as you can find in Mexico. So we are looking at history and also a very nice part of our history. Okay. <laughs> How can I be lucky? <laughs> How can uh, we, right, the people yeah. watching, uh -huh. how can they like win the lottery or whatever? Because I know that you are really big on what you call the cosmic ritual. See. And so what can we do to make ourselves more lucky? Like just if we want to, you know, win the lottery or win at the slots or win in Vegas, whatever it is, uh -huh. how can we be lucky? <laughs> well, the first part, as an astrologer, I have to admit that the first part is that people know when they are lucky. Mm -hmm. Absolutely know from birth, because they enter a small draft of a ion, and they know that if they enter, they will win the ion machine. Mm -hmm. so, um, so people know. There's a, a saying in Mexico that, I th I'm sure it's universal, that there's a difference being born uh, with a star than being, uh, than being crushed, than being born with star crushed. Mm. So it's, 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 it's not the same being born, uh, nacer con estrella, mm -hmm. being born with star, than nacer, than being born nacer estre que. estrellado. Ah, okay. Uh, so crushed by the star. Yes, so, yes. So it's, just, it's a game word, but then we understand that very clearly. Mm -hmm. 
So th that's the first thing. The second thing is to acknowledge that when Jupiter is in your sign and also in your moon sign or even more so in the ascendant sign, and then we, they have to consult us, mm -hmm. <laughs> so they know these three characteristics, then Jupiter will give uh, luck. Mm -hmm. It's a very, that's no myth, mm -hmm. that's a reality. Uh, I was um, explaining an area that and I can see that in my workmates uh, that when Jupiter is in their sign, they win every lottery available. Not mm -hmm. our main, not only the main lottery or the play, but I advise people. Jupiter is in your sun, sun sign. sign. Okay. Sun sign. Also. So keep an eye out for that because that happens once every 12 years that Jupiter so, will be in your sun sign. But then on the moon sign as well. And the moon sign. Andy. Ascendant sign. Yeah. So there's a lot of, of opportunities. Yeah. And we will add a, a fourth one mm -hmm. when the Jupiter is in the part of fortune, fortune. sign. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a lot. See? Yeah. So you can, th that will help. Jupiter first, then the moon. Yeah. The moon, if it's in your sign and you're buying the ticket. Ah, uh, okay. So that happens once every 28 and a half days that the moon will be See, in your, your birth, birth moon sign. Uh -huh. Okay. Also in your mm, sun sign. Okay, so keep that in mind. Every 28 and a half days, you get a two and a half day window. When the moon returns to your moon sign, that's when to buy that lottery ticket, quote yeah. unquote, or and do also, something where you want to be lucky. Yeah, yeah. and also the ascendant. I'm not and sure the about the sun when sign. When the moon is in the, the ascendant. ascendant. Okay, that's mm -hmm. another window for 28, See? every 28 and a half days. And also in the second house. Okay. And also in the part of fortune house. That's awesome. <laughs> There's lots of windows so, so, there. Yeah, so almost um, okay, a 10 day, 10 day mm -hmm. opportunity. It's not only that the draft will be at that time, but that you buy the ticket there. Mm. And also, I don't know if in any in, in part of the world, but here in Mexico, the, the vendors, the draft vendors are all everywhere. Mm. And they come right to you and say that before I, I study astrology, a long time ago, I was running around here, walking around here, mm. And so a vendor, a lottery guy came up to me and said, buy me a ticket. And I said to him, I don't have, I'm not lucky. Mm. He said, you don't have to worry about that. I'm the lucky one. <laughs> I love it. I'm the lucky one. You just buy the ticket. I mm. said, okay, fine. Mm. <laughs> you tell me which one. Mm. And so uh, I like that, that answer because it's true. Mm. They also select the number and they have certain numbers. Mm. And as the Fortuna story tells you, they approach you, and when they approach you, if you are open, you are create a small window to ask heaven, please tell me the number, mm -hmm. which one I choose. And there's always, remember that I say, mm, you might think I'm joking, but the number that you're buying has a message for you that is related to your fortune. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, that you have a four number. There's a working number. You will find work, you will, in luck in work. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's in, in a three. You will find luck in, uh, in something you create or in a child, in a child, mm -hmm. no? son or daughter. If you find a nine there, not only the last number, but adding all the numbers, mm -hmm. you will find a luck in something sacred. Okay, so go through the single numbers. So you go through one to nine. What? Yeah, <laughs> just very quickly. Just give like two or three keywords because I know people are listening right now and they're thinking, okay, say five, <laughs> say six. <laughs> Tell me that. Okay, so yeah. So well, if you find yourself attracting these numbers or uh, uh -huh. finding these numbers in your <laughs> lottery tickets or whatever, yeah. this is what it means. One. See, uh, one, you will find something important um, luck when some uh, when you're starting something mm -hmm. so start something that's that's the lottery thing mm -hmm. if you have two then your partner is involved or do something with a partner that's the luck uh, the message this is paying attention to the numbers in your life yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, so you s you sum up all the numbers mm -hmm. right if you have the three, you find luck in uh, you in something relaxed or being happy about, or also with your children. All, I think the five is like that. Mm -hmm. The four, you will find luck working. Yeah, <laughs> you better put in the time. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, for for five is creation all know all that about uh, having love maybe lucky love maybe lucky with children maybe lucky in creativity mm -hmm. and then with six you will find luck for health treatment like mm -hmm. we have in the sixth house. Mm -hmm. So would so, you say like getting a health treatment on the sixth of the month or the 15th of the month uh -huh. uh, or the 24th of the month, those are better days to actually the get a health treatment? It's possible. It's yeah. possible, maybe. And also to start the treatment mm -hmm. because the message is giving you, you will be lucky with that. So mm -hmm. start with issues like that. Yeah, the beginning of the, the beginning thing of is what the you're, thing. what you're see, especially looking the at numbers four. See, the message that is giving you, mm. do this to, to enhance your luck. Mm. Number seven? Number seven would be partnerships again, uh -huh. see. Uh, partner, start doing something um, nice with them. Mm. No? So, yeah. Eight would be hard as well, but it's, uh, it's uh, if we go to our number eight, it's finish something mm. if something is over go to the next thing mm. and nine will be something sacred mm. go to be pure at heart be honor God honor the, the God within you or outside or the universe mm. and that would bring you luck and see well I was gonna s ask you about uh, the 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 idea of the cosmic ritual. So that's what we're tapping into here when See. we're talking about mm -hmm. looking at where the moon is, that mm -hmm. how it's activating your chart and looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what the cosmic ritual means. It means See. tapping into the cosmos more consciously mm -hmm. so that you're able to create the kind of luck you're hoping to. Yeah. Because let's remember that the, in English, the word is, is draft. Uh, especially but we have to approach it from a playful side mm. because it's a it's a piece of time that is outside the draft especially or the game we are aiming at as in Vegas we are um, isolating that from normal day life mm. so we have to approach uh, gambling or playing more proper a, pro a proper word for it in the sense of isolating it from the normal life. We have, uh, we have two issues. I, I want to, to draw our attention to it in astrology, which is um, freedom and free will. And um, the other one is that, uh, need or destiny, mm -hmm. which is uh, in, uh, not movable, right? So from this perspective, we mm. play like that. Mm. Because if we play, there's a window for us to be free. We expect the unexpected for that time. And so we have to approach that in a playful side. And from the side of need, we have so to add some tension to it. So, so a little bit of emotion that tenses. And between the, tenses, the tension and the playfulness is the richness of the game. So we have to approach it from a playful uh, way. Mm -hmm. um, so I make it a special ritual to ask the gods what is good for you, what is your fortune, mm -hmm. what belongs to you, and trust that the goddess will give you exactly what you are meant to have. And so let me ask you about the transiting part of fortune. Uh -huh. Does that matter? Like if I'm looking at, let's say, I'm looking at the part of fortune conjunct my north node. Mm -hmm. Now that'll be like a moment, maybe mm -hmm. once a day. See. Uh, should we look at something like that as well to tap into it? Well, or I should... Or can get too specific? Or well, what? I should think that it, it does move very quickly, the mm -hmm. part of fortune. Mm -hmm. That accounts for the myth that says that fortune runs very quickly. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a parallel between it. So um, that's why I go to the s slower, like Jupiter and even the moon that moves very, qui very quickly as well. So it, uh, you have to trust your luck, really. It's hard in, the, in, in that sense because it really changes every four minutes, I think, or every, it starts opening since um, the angle between the sun and the moon is moving all the time. 
then the part of fortune mm -hmm. is moving as well, mm -hmm. and the part of spirit. I don't think I, it would be hard, mm -hmm. but let's play and have fun with it. We'll see. Yes. Next time, I'll tell you something about it. <laughs> I, I love that philosophy, like just enjoy. Because, yeah. you know, you think about in astrology, the fifth house has to do with play, mm -hmm. but it also has to do with luck and going see. from rags to riches. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, play and see where it is that your luck takes you. But as you said, also be mindful that there is a, a destiny as well mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we want to honor and mm -hmm. we want to trust because I do believe that whatever it is that is our destiny is ultimately part of helping us to be more loving and wise people in the world mm -hmm. but that's my personal philosophy given the things that you shared about my chart <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry I'm sorry no 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 it's okay <laughs> it's what's an I am willing to be vulnerable in this moment for the sake of celebrating you okay thank you and I'm thank honored. you you're so welcome I love you <laughs> yeah, I love you too okay yo trato hablar espanol sí. poquito I'm gonna sí. try to talk a little bit of Spanish <laughs> because the amazing Yuriria you saw how amazing her English is but she was feeling a little bit uh, some Rusty. ways about it and so I said, don't worry, <laughs> I will speak Spanish so people can see and compare for those of you who do speak Spanish to see that your English is really good. <laughs> Thank you, you're sweet. Yes. You don't have to do yeah. this, you know. No, yo puedo y yo quiero. Muy bien. Yo Go. quiero que gente... Go! <laughs> Go. <laughs> Vámonos! <laughs> sí. Okay, entonces, ¿qué puedo decir a ti? ¿Qué puedo preguntarte? Well, yo pienso que usted muy especial. No, usted. Okay. She gave no. me this look when tú. I said usted. Yeah, tú. <laughs> tú. Yeah. Eres. Uh -huh. Eres mi hermana. Eres Así mi es. amiga. Sí. Mi hermana mexicana. Sí. Así es. Muchas, Muchas gracias. Gracias a ti. Que gracias para gracias. estar aquí. Muchas gracias. And that's Muchas all the Spanish gracias. I'm going to speak right now. Yeah. yeah. But thank you. Beautiful Spanish. Thank you. Thank you. And Yuriria really is one of my very dear friends here in Mexico. And I've known her for years. And just incredible, an incredible astrologer, an amazing teacher, and uh, thank you. Thank you thank for you. being here. Thank you, you're amazing too, and best of luck and success. Yes, this we year. love each other, yeah. we do <laughs> love each other. And thank you for being here, for celebrating mm -hmm. Yuriria Robles with me. Until we connect again, take care. <laughs>